Here he is. He's going left. Let's see him. McWhorter Custom Rifles presents You know, Denise and I have always really loved chasing these big white tails. That's been our first love. But over the last several years, I've kind of gotten the elk bug, and I've been fortunate enough to kill a couple of big bulls. And this year, Denise and I started talking about it, and we've decided to take her on a, her first elk hunt. She trained all spring and all summer for the hunt, and now we're ready to go to New Mexico to catch one of these big, giant, screaming bulls. And I can tell you, fellas, a screaming bull is a lot better than a screaming wife. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by McWater Custom Rifles, Extreme Wildlife Adventures, Swarovski Optique, Yeti Coolers, and Barber Creek Shooting Academy. Well, Denise got tired of me shooting elk every year, so she wanted to go kill her an elk. So we're going to New Mexico. We got a two day drive. We've been packing, getting stuff ready all day. So we're right here, right at the very last of light. And she wants to Shoot her gun one more time at 500, so we're fixing to let her send it. Seven rim mag, board in action, Brooks barrel, Trigger Tech trigger, Swarovski. She got it dialed up to 500. We got a four inch gong out there waiting on it. Now, elk's bigger than that, but if you can hit that four inch gong, you're good to go. Dead so, elk. you ready? I'm gonna spot you over here, so okay. send her down. Ready? No wind, no wind, full value straight, no wind. <laughs> Whoo, smoked him. Good job. You ready to go to New Mexico? I'm ready. You want to shoot again? That's up to you. I feel good. All right, one more shot. All right. Make sure that wasn't luck. <laughs> oh, another one. I guess it wasn't luck. I wouldn't want to be a New Mexico elk when when Denise gets behind this gun, so. You excited? I'm, just, I'm not excited about the uh, 25 hours in the Yeah, truck. that means I'll be I'm driving and she'll be hunt. in a sleeping yeah. bag in the back seat, so. But I'm excited. All right, get your gun, I got your ammo, let's go. New Mexico, what a beautiful part of this country. Uh, arrived here and I am just taken aback by the beauty of all the mountains and the buttes. Um, just a different part of the country that I've never seen and um, cannot wait to get up in these mountains and uh, find a big old elk. Man, this is beautiful out here. Yeah. There it is right there. Here's Peach truck. 1,700 miles. 1,735.4. Ready to That's be a out of the truck. Way. But this is, uh, I've been waiting on this for so long. When you get these big elk bugling in the morning, you'll be glad you rode 1,700 miles. Kimado, New Mexico. There's Mr. Pete. Mr. Pete! Man, well. good to see you again. Welcome good to see you, Dave. Welcome back to New Mexico, man. <laughs> this is, uh, my better half, Denise. Dad, right? Okay. Pete oh, Davis. This is, this is Denise. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, she's already <laughs> cheesing up to the camera. Well, she should. <laughs> me and Pete, uh, last year he put me through the paces. He said this is going to be a sissy's hunt this year. It's all flat land, well, easy stuff. Okay. He's already got a 400-inch bull waiting for you in the morning, so cool. it'll be easy. You're not. You're There's not. A lot of things that he says that are incorrect. I know. Let's start over. As again, long right? as you understand that, when he talks about me too. <laughs> So we're going to get our stuff, and uh, we'll get inside, and we'll get organized, and maybe we'll go look at some elk this afternoon. Come on in, guys. Sounds good. All right. You got him? Yeah. He's out by himself. She's looking at a good bull. She's looking at the bull she's going to shoot in the morning. This is a, one of the 400-inch bulls that Pete promised us if we came out here. Uh, we found some elk with the 15s. They're about 
what are they, 18, 2,000 yards yeah, out there? Yeah, they're, they're way out there. Way. But there's a real good bull. There's two bulls out there, but one of them's a really good bull. Well, what she could do is He's shoot. He's a big old body sucker, isn't he? And wherever the bullet hit, go out there and set up and shoot again. <laughs> about, about three <laughs> shots, she'd be on him. <laughs> mm-hmm. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Sport Ear by Axel Hearing Performance. Alan is a very experienced elk hunter. Just a couple of years ago, he just took a giant elk. Oh boy. Wow. Oh yeah, I'll take him. You ready? I'm ready. We're out here, it's October the 1st. It's uh, Denise's first elk hunt. The elk are in trouble. We got our McCorder 7 rim mag this morning and we get one that gets inside about 600 yards. He's, he's in a world of trouble. I'm ready. All right, let's go, come on. First light. He's herding his cows back towards the mountain here. We got a wind that's kind of iffy, so we're gonna have to get we're gonna have to get in front of him here. We're waiting for it to get good light to see which way he's gonna go before we make a move. He's big. They go into Dark Canyon, then it bluffs up back there. They don't leave, they don't go out that right. side. So then we can get up on top of the mesa and we can glass down. Right. Get this biggest, uh, this biggest tree right here in front of us. Mm -hmm. the big one. Mm -hmm. If you come right here, you look at the top of the tree and just to the right. Okay. And then look way out there. Got him? They're on that ridge, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the one sure I'm looking at. They're kind of walking up it. Yeah, up the ridge. Mm -hmm. So I think we can get up on the top of the mesa. We can glass down in. That's Dark Canyon, that big bottom of the mesa. That's where they're heading. And there's water in there. There's bedding areas, and it's it's getting late enough. They're going to be heading to beds. So we'll get up on top, glass in there, and see where they go. Our first morning out, we did a lot of walking and hiking. We had to do some climbing around some of the buttes and rock faces. But Pete knew my abilities and kept me in areas that I could handle. Uh, they moved up into some pretty tough country. We got up in there and glassed. <laughs> you figure they're gonna go up higher? What are they gonna do? They'll probably stay pretty much where they're on that bench right there. They'll roll into a draw somewhere. Yeah. We got eight or nine of the cows who were in that group this morning with that bull, and we think they're either on their way to a water hole or just coming up from this water hole. So we hadn't seen the bull yet. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Hoff Power Auto and Outdoor Stores, Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Sport Ear by Axel Hearing Performance, and Surge Pro by Biofac Crop Care.
Hey, James back from Barber Creek Long Range Hunting and Shooting School. We're gonna talk about proper bench shooting techniques. Now I got it, we don't hunt from a bench, but if we hunt from a blind, this is gonna be very similar. But the other thing is everything we do on a bench should really have parity with what we do on the ground. And one of the biggest things I wanna talk about is letting the gun function like it's supposed to. A lot of people fight the gun and they torque it, can't it, and then they put too much torque on it by over gripping and mounting the gun. When we were all kids, we were all taught basically to put the gun or the buttstock of the rifle in our pocket. And what that does is if we do that is when the gun fires, it allows the gun to kick off to the right for a right-handed shooter in the barrel left. I'll have a heck of a time getting back on target to see if I hit my animal. Now, in the military world, my background as a sniper, I always had a spotter who told me where I hit. But in a hunting world, I always don't get to have somebody with me. So I need to see if the bullet impacts the animal or it doesn't. To do that is I'm gonna tell you to do something a little bit different. Take the gun, line it up, and then put your body as horizontal as possible towards the target. And then pull the gun back, same thing with the bipod, and then force it forward by preloading it. And if you notice, when I lean right into the gun, I'm horizontal towards the target. I'm gonna keep saying that because it's really important. Now, when this gun recoils, it's gonna literally come straight back. I'll take my upper body mass and I'm gonna force it right back in the target or into battery, and I'll literally see my bullets hit my animal. That's pretty important for what we do for long range. The other thing is don't fight the gun. This gun will naturally recoil straight and have what we call a straight line recoil as long as you have a good front rest and a good rear rest. Now this is a big leather bag, but you know, you can take a sock and what we used to do is fill them with rice. Don't do that anymore. Nowadays, just go to Walmart or someplace and just get yourself some airsoft pellets and fill it with it. Or you can just buy aftermarket bags, but you gotta have a rear support. If you don't, when the gun fires, it will drop in the back and cause vertical stringing at long range. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot the gun at just 600 yards just to show this and I'm gonna get behind it and put my body horizontal and do it like I'm supposed to and you'll watch the impact and then I'm gonna let the gun shoot itself and I really mean that. So stand by, let me get loaded and I'm gonna shoot it at 600 yards. Again, 6.5 caliber. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot at target number two. Wind is left to right at about three mile an hour. Here we go, I'm gonna give it about a quarter minute left one. Here we go, stand by. Okay, saw the impact. I literally hit about a half to three quarter inches just off the bullseye at about 3.30. I saw everything, I saw the bullet hit, no issues. Now we're gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna let the gun shoot itself. And again, if you don't fight the gun and let it do everything it's supposed to, here we go, stand by. Same target, 600 yards, all right. Nice hit. I hit the target, it wasn't even behind the gun. Let the gun do itself. This is another downrange shooting tip from James at Barber Creek Shooting Academy. Thank you very much. All right, yeah, we need the gun because we're killing one today. We, we saw a big bull this morning and uh, we think he's bedded up in this, in this crag up here and uh, Pete knows exactly where we're going. Where are we going, Pete? We're going up there. Okay. Hi. Very high. <laughs> Very high. Top Very high. Am I going to be able to get there? Well, you'll be at there. Where do you think they're going to be? Right along that ridge top. I think they'll be just below it. I think that's where we saw them go into last. They should have stayed there all day. I got you. That wind's perfect. It's just right if we get up on this little hill right here. Okay. And then glass across that water holes over here. And then the feed areas that they like to go out on this side. So we should see it all from that hill. Okay.
Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants, Capstone Precision Group, Brooks Barrels, Borden Accuracy, Trigger Tech, Revolution Safe Company, Safari Club International Foundation, and Browning Trail Cameras. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Real Texas Barbecue. He's right on this next face right here. We just heard a bull. We think it's a bull we've been after all afternoon. Pete's gonna, gonna call to him again and see if we can get him to answer with some pinpoint before we go around this corner up here. We hear a bugle and we all grab our gear and off we go. We got our sights on the herd and we knew there had to be a big bull in there. Got him on top of the ridge. Come on, baby's right here. to the left. Kill him. Get on him again. Where is he? He went behind the brush to the left. He d he's... You, Where from the cow? He's down. Down. He's down. He's down. down. Oh, good job, baby. Good shot. Good shot. <laughs> you got your first elk. Your first New Mexico oh bull or any kind of bull. He's on the ground. Oh, man. Man, he is stone dead. Five seconds from breathing to no more breath. This 175 grain burger out of this seven rim mag, what a shot. I mean, it just smoked him. Could not be dead or any quicker. Pete stopped him perfect. Man, Pete made the call. He said, he's gonna step out in that opening. Don't make a cow call, we'll stop him. And on the second call, that bull said, ooh, time to die. <laughs> and you obliged him, <laughs> good job. All right, let's go get your bull. Let's go get your bull. Man, it's starting to rain. It's gonna be fun, isn't it? <laughs> well, first day in New Mexico, uh, Denise's first elk hunt ever. She's been training for this all summer long, riding the elliptical and, you know, eating right and everything, and uh, it paid off. We saw this bull first thing this morning, and uh, he was just too far for, a, for an ethical shot. And uh, we hiked in where Pete thought he would be this afternoon and we heard a bugle and the elk was, we, we thought was around the hill. 
So anyway, we got back up and we spotted this elk finally and uh, closest we could get was 503 yards. When I finally laid my hands on this big bull elk, it was such a feeling of accomplishment. Only a hunter can understand what that feels like. We're shooting a seven uh, rim mag with a Swarovski on top and uh, we ranged him at 503, had a corrected shoot two of uh, 483 and uh, at the crack of the gun, we heard the thump. He staggered down the hill and we found him piled up against one of these junipers here right below where she shot him. Right where the last time I saw him. Perfect that. shot on a big New Mexico elk, first elk ever. Not gonna be the last one. Though, no, either. no, I will be back. Yes, All right. absolutely. Get him good and cut up, and uh, we're going to go wait in the okay. truck because it's raining. Don't film it because I'm not doing all that. <laughs>